Muting. Broadcasting live from beautiful Zagniff Studios in the heart of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It is time for this week's episode of Indie and Unsigned, where we bring you tales of the independent entertainer on their way to the big time. Remember who you're listening to today, because you may see them on the big screen or hear them on the radio tomorrow. Hosted by yours truly, the legend in his own mind, the man, the myth, the mad karaoke DJ, Mr. Fingers. And without further ado, let's get into this week's episode. All right. How's everybody? everybody doing how's everybody doing hope you are enjoying this beautiful saturday all right theme music that's enough i'm gonna have to fade that out or something that's just okay there we go (laughs) oh man it's saturday february the 6th 2021 how are you all doing welcome to season two episode three of Indian Unsigned. I am your host with the most Mr. Fingers, the Mad Karaoke DJ, coming to you live from beautiful Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This week, it is my pleasure and my honor. I got another guest here that I'm uh, 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 well associated with. We go back almost a full decade to when I made my stand-up debut of very short-lived career stand-up. Uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, he hails from Woodbridge, Virginia, uh, and is hosting an open mic comedy show. We'll get into all of that in a little bit. But I want y'all to give a warm Indian Unsigned welcome to my guest, Mr. Brandon Moore. Brandon, how you doing, bro? How you doing, What's up? Hey, glad to be here. Thank you for having me, first off. Um, hey, man, it's been a while. It has been a long minute, man. The last time I saw you, oh, geez. I was hosting trivia at Smoky Bones in Woodbridge. And you and uh, Dev came through. I was like, yo, I got trivia going on, man. Come through and see me. He was like, where? I was like, Smokey Bones. How close is that? He was like, don't matter. We'll be there in a minute. <laughs> and uh, that was a, that was, I think that was the last time I saw y'all before I left. Yeah, that was a while back. Jeez. That was like four years, three, four Roughly. years before, before I moved out of the area, man. Yeah. Jeez. It's crazy how fast time has been going by because it doesn't seem like it's been that long. It, it feels like it's probably at most been like two years, maybe three top. Um, but yeah. just crazy how you know how fast everything's moving and like I'm one of those people I don't equate time to anything until like I'm actually like sitting down and like thinking about it and like I'm stuck during like coronavirus season. Um, I've just been, you know, just, just now like things are like minute, starting. What, 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 what season? What season? Um, coronavirus season. La, la, la. Guess what, bitch? Coronavirus. A bitch is scared. I'm la, la, la. Yeah, real. <laughs> Thank I you did. for giving me an opportunity <laughs> to throw that out there. I did that one just for you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. We were talking about that before the show. I was like, that's one of my favorite sound bits. But yeah. I love that Cardi B. <laughs> The virus like that thing. oh my gosh that's my heart so much good yeah uh your heart that's my heart i mean not like the coronavirus like you know stuff but just hearing that sound no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying cardi b does your, your heart good huh i mean she she, well, she does other things good but you know my heart, <laughs> for, for this conversation my heart uh, a little bit okay. of good <laughs> strictly for the cardio i got you i feel you yeah yeah oh, tell, tell me what you what you've been up to man um, well, one, trying to stay healthy, um, trying to avoid the coronavirus like it's child support. So, um, you know, that's the, <laughs> that's Man, the don't, 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 get me, don't get me started, sir. Do not get Look, me started. I don't have any kids, so I can say that. Look, I, I, I can four. say that. I've got four. And uh, uh, the, two, the two oldest have, uh, have outgrown that portion of uh, my needs. <laughs> You get to keep a uh, keep a few pennies, yeah. But I, don't get me wrong, man. If they call me, they tell me they need something. I got them, you know. Because yeah. 
I they didn't get here by themselves. Their mama didn't just decide I want to have some kids. They didn't get here by themselves. <laughs> Matter of fact, speaking of kids, my oldest is 25 years old today. Oh, really? Well, happy birthday yeah. to oh, my birthday is next week. Next Friday. Oh, word. Yeah, word. 12. Matter of fact, speaking of, I mean, you weren't even old enough to drink when I met you, or had you just? I thought, so fun fact. <laughs> okay. Uh, fun fact: I was not. Um, I want to say when we did the um, the first show at the uh, fire station. I want to say I was not. Yeah, I was like twenty. Like I was on the cusp of turning twenty-one, but I was still twenty. And I remember me and Devin. Well, Devin got in trouble because. Um, because uh shocker, shocker. Uh, the, the whole karaoke posse the one to get in trouble would be Devin. yeah so Devin, um Devin jink is one of our one of, one of the members of the karaoke um karaoke comedy posse um me and him started comedy at the same time so we're both the same age i technically am older by a few months but um there was a there was someone at the bar that was trying to buy Devin a drink and they were successful at buying a drink and Devin thought it was just a regular Sprite, but then when he got the drink and sipped it, he found out it wasn't Sprite. It was, you know, it was a mixed drink. And then the bartender saw the garnish on top. It was like, hey, you're not 21, and kicked Devin out. And since Devin was my ride, I had to leave out with them. So that's why we left early. Right? Fortunately, <laughs> that was after we had done the show. Yeah, after you done the show, thank goodness, because like the, the person loved Devin's, you know, performance so. It was like, hey, let me buy you a drink. And, you know, Devin's like, I'm not 21. And the dude's like, you know, the person's like, hey, I got you. And, you know, still bought the drink and we got kicked out. I have an idea who that person was because that's uh that that uh, gentleman is a good dude. And uh, <laughs> no, nah, I'm serious. He, he's a good he's a good dude. If it's who I think it is, he's a good dude. He and his wife are both wonderful people. They were there with us that night. Matter of fact, if you ever I don't know if I sent you the video or not, but if you listen it's him and his wife are the two people that are dying the most at all the jokes. Like they, they enjoyed the whole show from start to finish. I so, vaguely remember. I vaguely so remember. Little, little, yeah, little, little background, little background on me and Brandon. Um, I had been doing karaoke at that point for, um, it had been a little bit. It had been uh, about eight, nine years or so, a and bit. Uh, and I. Um, I, I uh, used to run with, uh, I used to run back in the day, I used to run with your other uncle, Dion. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, he brought uh, another gentleman to come to the show, Romeo, Romeo Divine, mm-hmm. who we'll get into Dion and Romeo a little bit later. And, um, you know, I had my thing for cracking, you weren't old enough to get in the clubs and you didn't know me like that. But my thing was, <laughs> my thing was people, if, you know, I would have a couple drinks in me, and me and you, me and Dion were a lot alike in that if you came if you came up there wrong, you were gonna get roasted. Oh yeah, and that was my thing. And and my friends would always tell me, look, we could tell when you've had like when you've passed about your fourth or fifth drink because then you'll do a whole ten minute set on somebody. <laughs> I had one of my favorite stories to tell is, and I just told it on the show a couple weeks ago because I had another comedian on from Michigan. Um, the guy came in to the show one night and uh stage was way high up and he was a, a little fella and he was heckling everybody and at some point i got tired of him heckling people and i told him i said man look don't they have a sign at the door say you must be this tall at karaoke does mr rourke know you snuck off the island does this sound familiar boss the plane the plane and he wanted to fight like that whole roast session i went on i went in on dude for about a good seven eight minutes i was like that other cat i'm about to end this man's whole career, whole career like, yeah just went in on it. I turned around and said, it's about to go down. Like, we just went in on it. And that he wanted to fight, and I had to buy him and his boys drinks and the oh, whole night. That was that was how I rolled. So, Romeo yeah. said, yo, bro, you're pretty funny. You have thought about doing stand-up. And I was like, ah, mm, not really. Because it's one thing to be sitting around in a group roasting people. That's easy, because that's spontaneous yeah. fun. You can comment on what's going on in front of you right then. It's an entirely different thing to sit down and go, you know, I cut my finger open in a can of tuna, which is nothing because people do that all the time. But to get on stage and do a solid four or five minutes about cutting your finger with this can of tuna and all the thoughts that ran through your mind and, oh, my yep. God, I might be Ebola and stuff like that. So, yeah, but, come on, he's like, come on, man. He told me about the public access show. So I come down and I get there. And that was when I met you 
and old Mike B yeah. and um what's the girl's name? I cannot think of her name. She's she's on Facebook all the time and I cannot think of her name. Um but I met, you know, uh I met this whole cast of characters from yeah. you and Devin and uh then we decided to do what 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 I named the karaoke comedy posse, which was basically you, um you were the opener, Devin was uh what they call the middle act? What, what's the name for that? Was, uh, if they, it was me. Was it me, Devin? You, you were the opener. He was the feature. Yeah. And Dion was the headliner. Yeah. And then Romeo and I were co-hosts. Like hosting the show, I do that all day because I don't have yeah. to really have jokes. I just got to come out, and make some, you know, make some observations and pick at people in the crowd. And yep. uh, we did our first one was for my four thousandth karaoke show at Firehouse, and then we did yeah. another one. I think that same year for Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving at um at Eddie's, uh, Eddie's in Centerville, which is yeah, now they changed that place so many times. Yeah, Eddie, yep. Yeah, so that's the history behind the karaoke comedy posse. And we have uh we've stayed in touch yeah. often over the years, but now like I think the only person still really deep in comedy is you. I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, I've mean, outlived a lot of people in comedy. Um <laughs> what's that? Yeah, I know, right? In in uh-huh. in this short 10 years. As uh, you know, I think Dion dabbles a little bit here and there, but you know, Romeo's yeah. out of area. Devin joined the army. Uh, I haven't talked to Stefano in about a year, so you're it, bro. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it, it's crazy that you say that because um, I, I hit ten years in October. If you want to count it ten years, technically, because like last year with coronavirus is kind of kind of iffy because a lot of venues got closed down. Yeah, uh, but yeah, technically. 10 years in October, um, last October. And, um, it was weird. Cause I was, I was in new Orleans when, uh, when I was celebrating my comedy anniversary and, um, I was out there for a friend's wedding and, you know, new Orleans, I'm on bourbon street. I'm plastered. So like the next morning or that night, of course, cause you went by Pat Bryan's and got about six hurricanes. I mean, yeah. I mean, what else to do in you know, new Orleans, right? Besides eat food. I mean, you know, eat food, get your drinks in, Bourbon Street was lit, um, but I'm sitting in my hotel room that night thinking, man, like the last 10 years have just been, you know, it's been a roller coaster. Um, you know, you got your goods and your bads and, you know, in between. And um, I just think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm completely grateful for comedy because it gave me an outlet to kind of express myself. And I don't think I would have found this, you know, found that outlet if I didn't do it. And, you know, I look back to, you know, all the people I met, you know, throughout the 10 years. And um, I, I put this out all the time. A lot of people didn't think I would make it to 10. Um, they were like, hey, yeah, I could probably do like a year and then be gone, you know, forever. Um, but nope, still here. And those people that were like, yeah, one year, that's it. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty much MIA um, and not doing anything now. So I kind of laugh at them. But, um, you know, I'm extremely blessed and, and thankful for the last 10 years, well, 10 and a half years now of comedy, um, because I've, I've done a lot of things I never thought I would do um, and met celebrities and open for celebrities and yep. all that fun stuff. And it's like, you know, a little little old me would do all those things, a little old shy me. So it's crazy, right. but, you know, we're yeah. here. You, you mentioned celebrities. Now, I, you know, I, uh, Lord, I, I try to keep up with folks through the miracle of social media. Uh, uh the, the one the one person that I did see specifically that stood out that, that, that that's ingrained in my head that I saw you uh that I saw a picture of you with uh with uh Donnell Rollins aka Ashley Larry for those of y'all that uh, don't know who that <laughs> is uh so like who who are some of the some of the you know give me some not drop some names for me so who have you got to rub elbows uh. I, I got a list of my phone. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> as you alluded to, Donna Rollins, um, he had showed up to um, one of the shows I used to co-produce in D.C. Broken My Comedy is the name of the brand. Um, we used to do shows in um, in Adams Morgan, D.C. Well, pretty much throughout the northern you know, DMV area. Um, but we was doing, we had just started doing shows. And our fourth show ever that we ran, we did an all-ladies show, all-women showcase. Um and it was called Give It For The Ladies. And he had heard about it, just, you know, 
through the throughout the day he had heard about it i guess or that evening and um decided to come by so you know we're running the show and that's you know donna rollins pops up and we're like holy shit you know this is our you know fourth <laughs> show and this is our first you know lady showcase and he shows up to it and he's like you know just hanging out chilling and um you know the show was pretty much you know wrapping up it was like hey you know do you want to go on and he was like sure and um I remember because he he did forty five minutes or no it was it was over forty five minutes, um, it was probably probably between 50, 50 55 minutes, um, he did and like only five to maybe seven minutes of it was like old material and everything else was like brand spanking new of stuff you know he just been writing out and you know just looking to work on so yeah, um, one of the things that I heard is 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 real big with with comics when they're on the road like they. They do by the time put it to you like this. By the time you see the comedy special with the lights and the bells and the whistles and everything, they have worked on this material for years. And I didn't know that was how that worked. Yeah. How, uh, and, and Mrs. Fingers is bringing me a little liquid refreshment here. Thank you. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Um, uh -oh. One of the uh, uh, um, I, it, it was maybe maybe uh 15 or so years ago when i found this out because i remember when um uh cat williams first mm -hmm. hbo special dropped i was like yo this cat this dude here is hilarious and then you go back and you start you know through the miracle of youtube you see where he was at the comedy store doing that yep. same shit. he was at carolines he was doing mm -hmm. the, he some show somewhere some college campus where it was the same material um and some of it he took some of it for the first special and some of it for the second special like the part where he talked about you know i you, you, the one thing you cannot do is get unhigh when your child walks in the kitchen yep. the sitting there yep. just your child coming i look in the kitchen my child huh daddy the cocoa puffs is on top of the fridge and all that ain't up there like them damn insurgents that got your cocoa puffs like he did yeah. that years before he even put in a special so that's one of the beautiful things about working in the business and meeting these people is you get to see all their stuff before it blows up. Oh, exactly. And that's the biggest thing. And um, I, I feel like now a lot of people forget about that because they're so busy trying to, um, trying to, you know, write and do little short clips and stuff like that. But they forget um, that most times when you get discovered, you, you're in the game for a while. Um, I've always been told, you know, you don't get discovered until at least, you know, 10 years in right. um, before you get discovered because you've been, you know, at that point you've been doing it long enough and you know the do's and don'ts and, and, and you're kind of more of a student of the game. It's not one of those, you know, fly by night, hey, I'm here to make a quick buck, but, you know, I'm going to try to take the easy way to do it. Um, so, I mean, at, at one point while I was you know, younger doing it, I used to kind of get upset with myself because I'm like, you know, been doing it for five years and, you know, I'm not where I want to be at, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, I had a lot of like national tour headliners, um, you know, mm -hmm. pull me over and was like, Hey, you know, don't, don't get frustrated. It, it takes time to get discovered. So, you know, you're on the right path, you know, just make sure you keep your head clean and, you know, you, you keep doing what you're doing and, you know, your time will come. So I always kept that in mind. Um, and, and, you know, just try to be humble with it. That's, that's the biggest thing. Just try to be humble and, um, you know, anytime I can help someone else out, um, you know, especially running shows, um, you know, I try to try to give everybody the same, you know, not the, well, try to give everybody the same advice, but try to, you know, give them advice that's actually going to help them. Cause a lot of, a lot of guys will just give you advice so that, you know, they get you out of the face. Um, and maybe something that's not going to help you whatsoever, but, um, you know, I try to drop the same gems that other people drop for me and, you know, just try to give back whenever I can. So, oh. That, that's that's and that and that's that's good right there because you know i've heard the stories the tales of how you know let's just say you were a hot comic in northern virginia and it was any day before you got a shot like you show up and people just would just hate on you or grit on you or there was somebody been in the business grinding for 10 12 15 years that hadn't gotten this shot yet and you mm -hmm. got people you know you getting phone calls and stuff like that and they trying to you know, they go on and you're supposed to get five minutes and they take the whole set. I've heard all of those stories. Oh, yeah. I've never been I've never been party to any of that, fortunately, but I've heard all these stories. And 
then on the other end, it's just about the grinding, just to watch um, one of my favorite specials. I, I've got everybody's got a list, their top five, top yep. 10 comedy specials. And in my top 10 is the original Kings of Comedy, hands down. Uh, uh, yeah. One of the funniest, spe- I mean, the first time I saw it, my ribs hurt, my ribs and my face hurt for days, you know, like. I mean, everybody, Steve Harvey with the bit about the Titanic, Bernie Mac with milk and cookies, yep. you know, the, get your sweet ass upstairs and get some rest, you know, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then instead of entertaining, talking about he ain't finna call no another dude delicious, that kind of thing it was hilarious. But yep. it, if you watch the, um, I think if you got the DVD, you got to see on the end where they talked about, you know, how, how Bernie talked about he borrows neighbor's car and. Drive across, you know, cross state and go do a show, come back, leave the keys in the mailbox. And wife go, Did you get paid? I know how to get paid. Or Steve talking about doing a show on a card table in a in a mm-hmm. in a redneck bar in, in Podunk, Mississippi for twenty five dollars. And the guy told him, Smokey told me, if you step off that stage, <laughs> you don't get your twenty five dollars. So I, you know, so mad props and love to you for 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 keeping that going. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us right now, hey, hello, and how are you doing? Welcome to episode three of season three of Indian Unsigned. I'm your host, Mr. Fingers, the Mad Kill DJ. Go dogs. I had to throw that out there, even though it's not college football season right now. Uh, <laughs> and we're here with our guest, Brandon Moore from Woodbridge, Virginia. Uh, you're you've relocated from there since then. That's just don't don't go to Woodbridge. Look, you might see him in Woodbridge. I don't think you're there no yeah. more. Trying I'm to still here. I'm still here. I gotta hold it down. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, but uh, you, man, look, I I remember uh, the days when we did this because I did two of those public access shows with you guys, and then we did the radio yeah. we went on Romeo's radio show with Dion, and we couldn't take we couldn't answer none of Romeo's questions because Dion was flat cutting up. Um, Dion, uh, uh, Dion, the man. Yeah, for those of you unfamiliar, Dion, the man, Alexander, um, a man that I call quite possibly the hands down funniest man in the DMV because you just start a conversation with Dion in 10, 20 minutes and he's got you crying. Like the yep. Dion told me this Dion told me the second best dark skinned black man joke that I've ever heard in my life. I'll share the first one with you in a minute, but the second best was the thing about the peekaboo. Do you remember the joke about the peekaboo chocolate? He said to call you peekaboo because you're so dark yeah, and he's been really that, dark yes. and you open your eyes peekaboo. Like that, I mean <laughs> and he could tell it to me now. And and I would still crack up about it, um, uh, you know. And we did those two, and then there was the deal at uh, we did the, the two public access shows. We did yep. two KCP shows, and then there was the other show at um, what was the little place around the corner from the uh, uh, public access station, Velocity Five in uh, Maryfield. V- yeah, yeah, and we were doing the V Five shows. So to see after all this time that you're still getting after, because I looked up at one point and you were doing was it Funny Bone or Laugh House or whatever it was. Um, down so there. Funny Bone. Um, I did a couple of roast battles at the Funny Bone. I meant like, I did like the open mics, but they have like a um, like a tournament style. I haven't done that yet because um, you know coronavirus. Um, but I was a regular. Oh, pretty much my bigger twist. Don't do that. I almost hit the button again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, my biggest thing was I was um, you know hosted for the Comedy Zone. Um, which puts you know shows throughout the whole East Coast. They got you know comedy clubs up and down the East Coast, um, and kind of oh, so like maybe. So you were traveling and hosting, huh? Um, not as much as I wanted to, because you know I gotta gotta stay with work, and you know twenty five dollars wasn't gonna do much for me. Um, you know traveling out. I hear you, but, um, brother. I hear you. But, all I got but, was thank you, thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to, don't get me wrong, I wanted to, but I, I, you know, I could, you know, go here and there, but I can't do like a whole weekend and get paid only like 175 and then be like, hey, yeah, so you got to figure out your own way to get here and food and stuff like that. We're just going to pay you for the, the show in, you know, your hotel. And I was like, wait, I'll get paid right. for like gas out there. Nope. All right. Um, but no, when we had our comedy club in Fredericksburg, I was like one of regular MCs there. Um, and then, you know, just doing stuff in D.C., you know, hosting shows in D.C. and Virginia all over the place, um, you know, for the last so many years. So I, I pretty much well, I pretty know. much have done everything in comedy that you can almost think of between um, running a club at one point a, a couple of years ago. Um, I was a comedy manager, as you 
can quote quote unquote say, um, you know, oh, so you were the Mitzi run. Shore, of, you were the Mitzi Shore of the club, huh? Pretty pretty much, um, you know, running being a food that's runner. Dope. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's pretty dope, man. It, 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 for those for those not in the know, Mitzi Shore was the comedy the comedy store in L.A. Yeah, was, yeah. she ran the comedy store in L.A. And if you can think of anybody you loved as a comic in the 80s and the 90s, she was in part responsible. I mean, we're talking Robin Williams. We're talking yep. uh, getting, I mean, Richard Pryor was already well known, but Richard came through there. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I mean, you name them. They all went through the comedy store. She's acting. That's actually Pauly Shore's mom. That part I did yeah. not know. I said Pauly Shore's mom. Yeah. She's responsible for the birth of a lot of comics in the 80s and 90s that oh, yeah. are now are now the senior statesmen and stateswomen of comedy because, mm -hmm. you know, if she liked you, she gave you your five, 10 If she liked you, she gave you five or 10. And if she really liked you, you got a regular, you got in the regular rotation. Yeah, I got a regular gig, yeah. You show up and somebody got bumped off the, off the, off the roster, you know? So now oh, let me find out uh, DMV's answer to Missy show. I mean, that, that, that was, that was you. So, I mean, that, that was, that was years ago, but I mean, I've, I've done that. I've served. Um, you know, been a waiter for a night. Uh, when someone called out, you know, you got to put those boots on and run out there. Um, you know, food running, um, host, MC, sat people, you know, headliner, feature, uh, you know, all of it, guest comic, you know, pretty much everything. Um, you know, outside market for a show, I've, I've done it all. So, wow. Um, I, I don't consider so myself being a fun. Not no comedy at all. You ever, you ever blow up? You have, you be the next Kev Hart. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that I, I feel like as a comic, you have to, you have to do all those things. You have to be able to do all those things, especially if you want to make it big. And, and my thing, um, one of the, one of the firm things I believe in as a manager um, is I'm not going to ask you to do something that I wouldn't do. So mm -hmm. if I can go out there and do it myself then hey you can do it also and yeah. that's just one of the things you know I've, i always wanted to know every part of comedy especially with running a club like once i retire and you know have all that money to spend on something you know my, my dream goal is to run a comedy club um so you know with all the years of experience that i have you know learning the behind the scenes stuff i'm pretty confident that i could do it um but I'm just glad I learned those things very early because you you go, you grow to appreciate everything a lot more, knowing what goes into it. It's very easy right. for you to show up and perform, and then you know you get your pay or whatever, or get your wings and, and leave out. But for you to know the hard work, I, I, wings. Hey, look, some look. I've heard some stories. I haven't been through this personally. There's been some venues that say, "Hey, I can't pay you in cash. I can pay you in wings." Or white or green. Look, I don't. <laughs> ain't none of that gonna pay my rent, and none of that's gonna put, and none of that gonna put no gas in my car to get uh, back up and down the road. But I un understanding how the business works, I can see how you feel like that might be the the gig that gets you over the top, or. Yeah. That might be the night that so and so is in the audience, and they they pull your they pull your coattail and whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. I've I've heard the stories, man. I you know I didn't run in the community very long, but in that short time, I heard all these stories about just things that people have done. I mean, even your aunt Dion, who we go get, we got to get back to him in a little bit. We said we we're gonna talk yeah. about it. I mean, the stuff that he said, you know, the out of pocket flying from coast to coast out to LA and talking about shows and things of that that nature. It's crazy. I I just can't imagine. I'm I'm sorry, honestly, I I couldn't imagine working a gig, you know, my thing was DJing. People would be like, "Yeah, man, uh we want you to come DJ this wedding." And they give me this long list of stuff they want. And I'm like, "So what's your budget like?" And they're like, "Uh, so yeah, we're going to feed you and give you all the alcohol you want." Uh <laughs> but 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 <laughs> that's a different but that's a different animal than comedy because in, in comedy gigs, there's tons of people trying to get into comedy. Now, the beautiful thing about comedy is, is that the, the birth, the, 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 the growth of the internet mm -hmm. has given people avenues to get inroads into comedy 
um, that previously you just had to hit the road and tour and work for, um, you know, um, then I, I've actually, I've actually met a couple of Ryan Davis comes to mind specifically. Yeah. I went to see Ryan at the DC improv um, and that cat sold out six shows. He was only supposed to do a Friday, a Saturday, mm-hmm. and a Sunday, one show each. They had to add a, a second show because all the tickets sold out like that. And that's a yeah. cat that I had never heard of until Facebook. Another it, one. Oh, I was going to say, uh, feedback back off of that real quick. Um, I remember while I was working at the club in Fredericksburg, um, he had came down. And this is like right before he, like, he was on the cusp of like blowing up on, on the internet. But it was like right before. Mm-hmm. And then like two months later, he blew up. I'm like, holy shit! I just saw him like two months ago. So how like, did how, how did the audience react to his set when he was there? They loved him. Like they they loved him. I mean, he sold all of his merch that he had. They like, they loved him. Like, I, I've I've heard that too. I've heard stories about folks that you know they go and they do a set and the set is solid and nobody's feeling the set, but then they blow up. And then all of a sudden, oh man, I remember him back when you know when you weren't even feeling it back then. I exactly. to, went to see Drew Lynch here at uh, OKC at the comedy club here in OKC, mm-hmm. and uh, the guy that was his opener, dude, is sleeping out of his car. I felt bad. Like he's like, he's like, I don't have a social media right now. It's, I mean, he's like, I got one, but I don't have internet. Like he was, I was like, yo, I. I felt like seriously. I expected Sarah McLaughlin to come out from the background and start singing in the arms of the angel <laughs> while this dude, dude telling us his life story. I felt bad, but he was he was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I feel you, man. God bless you. If you anybody wants to get into comedy, God bless you. But I remember Ryan. Yeah. I, I don't remember Ryan until I saw him on Facebook and he started doing those videos. And mm-hmm. especially, oh man, especially with him going in on uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Oh yeah, and I went to see the cat at the. I went to see him at the improv. I'm in there washing my hands. You know, improv got a small ass bathroom. And oh I yeah, felt, I, felt I bumped into somebody. Like I was trying to get back to the seat because the show was getting ready to start. I was like, "My bad, bro." And he's like, "Nah, man, no problem." And I turned around and I saw him looking at me like this. What we're gonna turn around in a minute and see who it is? And I was like, <laughs> "Oh shit! Oh man, what's up, dog?" Like, oh wait, wash your hands first. Hey, what's up, bro? Yeah. Got a elbow dap, bam. And he came out, did a killer set, and then we, you know, I, I uh, went to see him. Wife and I went. The other cat is uh, Tricks, the Canadian dude. Oh yeah, that, that and and both of them down to earth. Honestly, as a whole, as as a as a as a whole, as a um, I found, and I don't, you can attest, to tell me, yeah, nay. I found in the entertainment field, comedians tend to be the the most down to earth. I mean, you got the some that get real big and they don't want to look at you or nothing. Yeah. But, they are some of the most down to earth, most humble people. Because as an industry, as an aspect of the entertainment industry, the struggle to get to the point where people want to come and see you is so real. It is. It's, it's, it's way real. You know, music and eh, music used to be that way, but music has kind of gotten to the point where I mean, come on, man, Bad Baby's got a million dollar recording contract. <laughs> no, I mean, you know I mean, it's true though, because like with comedy, you whenever you start off, it's almost it's like being an underground. Like oh, you, know. you got you got some shouts out on the chat. Those of you that are watching the oh. chat, if you're there watching, make sure you say hey when you pop in, so we know you're there. I'm monitoring the chat. My wife is monitoring the chat. You, uh, Orlando Jones, said what's up? What's up, Orlando? Oh, okay. OJ, um, no, OJ's a good friend hey, of me and me. <laughs> Uh, careful, careful with OJ now. The fourth time I met OJ Simpson. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bit, man. That's one of my favorite. I, I met the real, I mean, well, not the real, but I met the the famous one, you know, Lando Jones, also. Um, oh, Street. word, Mister. Yeah, one, was, um, one, one band, one sound, Mister. Then he used to be a comedian. Yeah, I got a picture of being him. Um, he was down to Fredericksburg also. Um, and he had um he had performed. He's actually cut friends. Him and one of my cousins in South Carolina, like they went to school together, so like he's, he's technically like family. So I kind of was like, "Yeah, that's one of my cousins." You, I got, I kind of used that little card. He's like, "You're a comedian, shut up." I'm like, "All right, <laughs> gonna hang out with him for a little bit, you know, VIP and stuff like that." It was fun. Um, but no, the thing about what you were saying a second ago, though, it, as a comic, like you, you, 
the only way you're gonna get big like that is you, you're gonna have to you gonna be a following. That's that's the only way anyone gets big these days. You have to have a following. You, you have to be. I, I tell a lot of kids. Well, I'll say. Uh, I say that because I've been doing it for ten years. Um, not because I'm about to turn thirty next week. Uh, but I tell like the newer comments. I'm like, oh, you know, shut your mouth! <laughs> you act like you are so dead. Y'all kids, kill me. Listen, y'all kill me with this. Oh my God, I feel so old. No, Man, I'm not saying that. I just when I was that. turning thirty, I was just getting started. Good. You understand what I'm saying? I'm. I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll be 51 in June now. Now I'm at the point where I'm starting to get a little <laughs> aches and pain and stuff like that. But I wasn't even studying old at 30. Please. I, I'm, I'm, running just, circles around, I'm running circles around the 20 year olds. What you talking about? I'm just saying the, re- the reason I say kids like that is because I've, I've been doing it longer than them. So I'm like, you know. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I say kids. I'm like, you know, these kids these days, you know, they don't, they don't understand that. And I try to tell them, one of the things I try to tell them is like, you have to. You have to make yourself marketable. Like the the real places where you gotta get those gigs that's gonna pay the money are corporate gigs. And for corporate gigs and churches, you know, for that aspect, they want clean comedy. So you have to be able to be clean. It's cool to be dirty, but you have to be able to clean it up also if you're trying to actually make a living off of it. Yes, because corporate gigs. Yeah, so I mean, corporate gigs you can get paid. You know, buku you. Oh my gosh, the money, you know, back back before coronavirus, corporate gigs. Oh my gosh, that was the way to go. You know, you just do corporate and cruises. That's the other one, cruises. Uh, but you have to be clean because you're you you know playing for families. You know, especially on the cruise right. boat. You, you got little kids out there, stuff like that. You know, um, resorts like Myrtle Beach. Like you have to be clean because you're going to be uh, in have front. You done of all of them? Have you done all of? Have you no. Um, oh, I've done okay. retirement homes if that counts for anything. Um, you know what? You know what? <laughs> I said I've done retirement homes if that counts for anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you you hear that. Matter of fact, one of the biggest um, in the last couple of years, you from you from me. I'm sure you're familiar with dry bar comedy, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's their big thing. All, most of their comedians are folks from the corporate comedy circuit. Yeah. And and, some, and of them, for, some of them, some of them, and some of them are hilarious. Some of them, you can tell they're still working on the material. But some of them are just as funny as insert name and, here. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, and that's where the money's at because you want someone that you know that can play for anyone. That's that's the biggest thing. You, you need to be versatile. A lot of a lot of doer comments try to go for like the shocky, edgy. You know, I want to go for shock factor, and they talk about things that you know. That make people uncomfortable and they leave. I mean, um, I, I was doing an open mic a few months ago and I had a comedian um, pretty much, you know, do some some rape jokes. And it's like, you know, Ooh. yeah, like you, you, you can't do that because you don't know what someone else has went through. And that that, that R word, it, it, it brings out an emotion in someone, you know, normally brings out an emotion. And sometimes, most times, people kind of just, you know, they they disconnect themselves from the show. So you lose everyone because you use that word. You can, you know, have a funny rest of your set, but people are going to remember you said that word and said something associated with it that they probably didn't like. Possibly brought back a bad memory in their head, and then, you know, you lost them. And they will never yeah. listen to you ever again. No. Hey, I, I seen people walk out of comedy show, not necessarily over rape jokes, but um, who was here? Talent the comedian. Okay. From way back in the days of Def Jam, like you weren't mm-hmm. even, you might have been a toddler. During I, well, I've, seen the, I've, I've seen him, you know, the last five years, but I know you talked about. Yeah, him and another dude named Kenny Howell. And, uh, they were doing a show here at the Civic Center across the street mm-hmm. from the across the street from the Chesapeake Arena where the Thunder play. They were doing a show in the Civic Center next to it. And uh, excuse me, Oof, that soda's getting me. Excuse me, Uh-oh. but I needed that. I needed that though because lunch was good. Anyway, <laughs> I forgot what the joke was. He cracked. Um, but this old this dude that was on a uh one of those carts like the ones at Walmart. Yeah, he all of a sudden 
we just saw he was out the door. He was out the door, and another dude was right behind him. And and uh, Talon actually was able to turn that because he's like, did dude just roll out on me on a on a hoover round? And then he got stuck at the door because he couldn't get over the. He couldn't get over. The, so that oh, was all the dude, talent. Did another ten minutes on that man. I did, had me dying. And the fun, the, the jacked up part was <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even remember who he was until about halfway through his bit because you know his catchphrase was like, "Don't take this stuff personal." Yep. Just comedy. And when he did that, I went. <laughs> And my wife was like, are you okay? You having a stroke? I was like, no, 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 no. That's a deaf comedy deal comic. And she was like, okay. Because my wife not. Yeah. My wife, there's a lot of things that I've had to indoctrinate my wife on. I'm not <laughs> saying that this is. No, man, come on, man. I'm not trying to talk about my wife bad. No, I'm, not, we had, well, I, no, I'm just we had, we had, how it is. We, we had different. It is. Yeah, we had different upbringings. And she, yeah. she was not as, she wasn't really, I mean, she probably knew what it was. But she wasn't 100% familiar with the exactly. roster, you know what I'm saying? Because all of those to think, because you know, to, to, to think about this, bro, it's been almost 30 years since uh, Def Jam premiered, and you think about the roster of people that we have seen that just were birthed oh. from Def Jam: Bernie Mac, mm-hmm. Martin Lawrence, Joe Torre, Guy Torre, um, Eddie Griffin, uh, some more. The, all of the original queens of comedy, um, yep. just uh, uh, Chris Tucker. The, the the list is the list is endless, and then on that end, you go over the other side of the BET and go to Comic View, and that's where you got the D yep. D L Hughleys and all. I mean, I went I went, I went to see D L before D L was huge, like before he was the the king. Yeah, you no, know, I've seen him. I've seen him live two or three times, and you know, but that was all before. Well, the last time was after. That's a whole different story. I had to tell you about that one after we go off the air. Oh, but um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. so you just just the work, the the amount of work. I the more I learn about comedy, and the more I learn about the inner workings and the politicking and the the, the elbow rubbing and getting in place with the right people, it 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 gives me a great deal of respect for the craft, and it makes me understand how sometimes the stress of that can be too much for some folk to handle. You know what I mean? Okay. So mad love, mad props and respect that you've been in the game 10 years. And look, you've been in the game 10 years and I had no kids and no scandals and, and <laughs> none, no, none. no, no <laughs> scandals, no charges. <laughs> you know, we going to knock wood on that one, but uh, all, all of that, but I ain't do like, like who like, okay. What is, You've been in the game for a while, and okay. what what's what's your eventual end goal? Like, where do you want to? Where do you want to? Uh, where do you see yourself? Say another five years from now. So this, five, this, 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 yeah, this is a hypothetical. So let's just say okay. so tomorrow we wake up, ain't no more coronavirus. Where do you see yourself in comedy five, ten years down the road? You got a shout out from a Dennis Mitchell on the chat too. Yo, Says, what's up, Huggy? Get back to the Berg at some point soon. Those of you, I'm let you answer the question in a second. Those of you just joining us, welcome to season three, episode three, Any and Unsigned. Brandon Moore in uh Brandon Moore in studio. Well, not in studio. I'm in Oklahoma. He's in Virginia, but here with us today on the show. If you're watching, give us a shout out on the chat. If you're just catching the replay, just give me a hashtag replay with your comment. Um we do go. I do go through and check those out, and if there's any anybody got any questions or anything like that. So if you anybody's got any questions for Brandon in the chat that hadn't asked anything, please uh, feel free. Oh, the missus said hey to you as well. Hey. So Sorry, honey. I, I know you was there. I gave you a shout on the radio before for bringing me a soda. She's like right in the other. <laughs> but I, you know, I got to. That's that's my boo boo. We gotta, you know, I, I gotta hey, sleep in the bed. Next shot, to us, you know, I get the shot on the air. I want to be. I'm not, not, I don't want to be laying in the bed at three o'clock in the morning. She got her arms folded, not saying nothing. Like, yep. what's wrong? Like, you, you thought, everybody else thought you could give me a shout out. Now, yep. I'm, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and put the disclaimer on it. My wife is not that person, but you know, you, you understand. I know some dudes. I know some dudes that go through that. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I brought you a soda. I brought you a soda when you were you were doing your little funky podcast in the back room, and I brought you a soda, and then I said hey on the chat, and you couldn't even recognize my name and nothing like that. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I, that's what we do. Wait a minute. I, I don't know where this ain't came from, but it's been around for a minute. But I don't know what that's what we doing now. Is that what we yeah. doing? Like, come yeah, on, wait a minute, oh hold on. Where that come from? Like, now again, my, yeah. again, my wife is not that person. That's, no, that just, I just said that for comedy's sake, baby. I love you. I buy you chocolate. <laughs> you better buy chocolate Valentine's Day this weekend. You better <laughs> shoot. Oh, bro, look, val- look, chocolate on Valentine's Day ain't nothing in this house. We keep a steady supply of chocolate in the house. Well, I mean, I know that, but you gotta buy the special kind. You know, I wasn't necessarily talking for the missus neither, because you know, I like I. But long, I look. The people at Twix, the people at Twix, the people at Twix, the people at the Seven Eleven around the corner from my house, like, you know, if you you could just, you know, you could buy the whole case. We'll sell you a whole case because I would go in there every night and get the uh, the four the four pack. Yeah, the four pack of pack of Coke. They'd be like, you could we sell we'll sell you a whole case if you want. Now nah, I'm good because I'll eat them all in one night if I have them. I, let me have. I know what I'm doing. Scientific method. It works. <laughs> I want to know if you look, you come by my house at two o'clock in the morning, answer the door like that. Mind your business because I got all four of them in there. It good. That's too like, much. Right? Nuts oh, for that's, the that's a little bit too much chocolate. I want us. I'm just saying. Bro, have, have you seen me? This is 270 pounds of chocolate. And yes, I, I mean, said, 210. Yes, I said 270. Huh? I'm right behind you. I got 210. Brother, congratulations and welcome. We I know, finally, right? We tease you so bad. <laughs> but if you don't eat, we used to have a running joke. Like anywhere Brandon went, we, we, we would give Brandon a menu and go, Brandon, hold the menu up. But everywhere we went, we, yeah, did, like, we did that whole time. We did not find a single menu that Brandon was not skinnier than. Like he was like, I'm eating. So much. He's like, I'm oh eating. My. Leave me alone. <laughs> hey, somebody tell me one more damn skinny joke. I'm skinny. I get it. Ha ha ha. ha. I used to hate that so much. Oh my gosh. I guess. Look, so, so to piggyback on, on this, so this is a brand new shirt. I just bought yes, this. Yes, baby. Disclaimer. I see you in the chat room picking that. <laughs> so to piggyback on that, so I just bought this shirt the other day, and I, I tried it on before I bought it. And normally, like the last couple of years, uh, probably about like three years ago, I was wearing a medium and then got into a relationship. Or actually, no, four years ago, I was you know wearing medium, got into a relationship, kind of gained a few pounds, you know, relationship weight. Got out of the relationship, never stopped gaining the weight. So, like, now I'm at an extra large. And I'm, like, put it on the shirt, like, uh, it's a little big, but I feel like I could probably still wear the large. And I'm, like, nah, that large is just, like, the armpits, like, all the way up here. You know, the arms. Like, <laughs> I'm, like, I can't. I was, like, bro, yeah, you, ain't, like, bro, you, ain't, said no, you ain't said nothing but a word. I had a shirt that I used to wear back in the day. said, be well, you know, like, the joint from, uh, the joint from Demolition Man. I put that joke on right now. Yeah. I said, believe he said, "Believe is welcome." There was more to it. I didn't know. It just it's like them sponges you put the, put the water Yo. in. <laughs> like, where did this weight come from? Like, I'm wearing sweatpants now a lot more. I'm used to wearing. I can't fit my jeans no more. I'm too broke to buy more jeans. Like, I wear sweatpants. I'm like, what is going on? You, you know, you put, you know, you put weight on when you put to put them pants on in the morning, and your pants they look at you like, bro, what is you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I meet, I got thigh meat now. I'm like, where did this come from? I got a beer cut. I'm like, yo, this this was never here 10 years ago. Like, I'll go on Time Hop or Facebook and, like, see a picture of me from, like, back in the day. I'm like, oh, my God. I look, I ate two of that person now. <laughs> I'm like, I, I was, I was, I I was, I was looking at myself like, man, like, why why did girls say yes to me? Like, I, I would have said yes. <laughs> so damn skinny. I look, no, I look we, unhealthy. We, like, what? <laughs> We used to tease Brandon. We used to tease Brandon and say he looked like one of them fifteen cents a week kids. The yeah, Sally Struthers used to make on TV for the price of a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> for the price oh, of a cup of coffee, you can be one of these. Children. And the thing was, like, I was so skinny, and I had. Like, the, the thing boy. was, the best so, part. The best, yeah, the best up part was. We go anywhere and Brandon would out eat everybody. Didn't you come with us one time yeah. to Dixie Bones and we, we all stop eating and watch yeah. you eat? Yeah. <laughs> Dixie, Bones is this little, Dixie Spot is this barbecue place down in Woodbridge, Virginia, which is like 
southwestern the southwestern Virginia region outside of DC. Yep. And uh there is uh there's this little spot. It seats about maybe 25 people, and but they have like a a, a barbecue buffet. Yeah, the barbecue buffet. Barbecue buffet where they got like hot links and pulled pork and and ribs and uh, collards and uh, I forgot what I mean, else because I all, mean all the soul foods, all all the soul foods. You can either go in there and order a plate, or you can go in there and say, "Let me just get to you know," and you get the all you can eat. And mm-hmm. all of us was getting it in. This was back when we was all skinny. Matter of yeah. fact, Dion seemed like the only one that's still skinny. We sitting there eating and eating and eating. Yeah. And we put we didn't put our place down. We sitting trying not to fall asleep, roasting on each other. We look, yep. Brandon. We know Brandon ain't jumped in. That could Brandon still at what? <laughs> like, bro, ain't that like your eighth plate? <laughs> yeah, I can eat. Like, but when, when I'm in the mode, oh god, I will, I will throw down. But that stuff started catching up to me now. I'm like, oh man, I'm, I need to, I need to say no. <laughs> Who are you telling? I but have the, nights. Was, the thing was back then, like I had so much confidence, like I, I was just, you know, like I would talk to any girl and somehow it would work out. I'm like, I don't know how that, like looking back at it, I, I don't know how I landed some of the girls I did because I, I definitely would have said no and blocked me and just kept going my day. But I guess it was the confidence. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not dogging you or nothing. I'm just saying, you know, knowing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I just know that ladies. I know that ladies can be particular, and especially, yeah, if, especially if you were that size now in twenty twenty one, you oh. might be struggling because these just be. these women got lists, bro. They like, I need a man that's between this height and this height, and he got to be between this weight and this weight, yeah. and he got to wear these clothes, drive this car, live in this neighborhood, work this job, can't have no kids, mind you. Now she got three. Um, oh, yeah, you, all the time. You, you know what I'm saying. All now I'm not now, mind you, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the fact that she meets none of the qualifications on her damn self that she wants you to meet. Exactly. It's just the fact that she meets none of the qualifications that she's giving you, but she expects mm-hmm. you. Mm, yeah. Nah, it, yeah really, you'd be like, you know what? You would be cute. I mean, you got the deep voice and everything. You do it. I see you with your little comedy thing. That's become a thing too now. The, the, oh, yeah. The minimum. Oh, yeah. You, you, you little, your little, your little, whatever, your funky, whatever, or don't let them put little and funky together. That just means, yeah, forget whatever it is you're doing. I see you with your little funky, stand on comedy gig and whatever. I see you, whatever, but you know, you, you I got that I'll a few break, times. I'll break you. I, you know, like I, I wasn't, I wasn't looking for you. Know how? Why, why are you coming for me? I wasn't. <laughs> Nobody called you. Check your caller ID. I guarantee you, you will not see Brandon more. We want more now on here. By the way, if you're watching this live right now, that is how you can get in contact with Brandon. Uh, he can be contacted. Yeah. If you want to follow him on Twitter and IG, it is at we want more with two O's M O O R now. Um, he's also, well, I won't give out your Facebook, but somebody could probably oh, you, you do Facebook. It's we want more now. It's Facebook also. Um, okay. You have Facebook. Yeah. Um, you can catch me on um on uh, Cash App. Also, we want more now. Um, <laughs> <Venmo. laughs> hey, hey, look, we in a pandemic, brother. Do they got to do to survive? You got OnlyFans? I do have OnlyFans. I got OnlyFans. Chachi Mandingo. Um, it's Stop it! Huh? Stop Chachi. it! No, I'm saying stop it. Like stop it for real. You got OnlyFans. You not? Yeah. I, look, everything I, was no. shut down. I got to make money really, somehow. I leave that I leave that way you put that. But you know what? There's a there's a guy that um, look there's look, a dude, is. there's a dude that does um there's a dude that does NFL recaps. Um that does NFL recaps. I don't know if you're familiar or not. Uh Chill Donis, absolutely hilarious. I've heard of but he's that. got when he run when he runs through his list, he's like, I'm surprised he's not on Frenchster and in MySpace. And he, he was running through like he's seriously he he said it's some of these uh he, as a matter of fact last week he listed he got an OnlyFans and a Pornhub he said I know you think that's me but they keep kicking me off all of these other applications so I gotta get in get it in where I get it in like doing like seriously he's on Pornhub and OnlyFans doing NFL recaps <laughs> some people you know, some people use OnlyFans for for other needs uh, like DJ Khaled and um. And uh, yeah, Fat Joe got one, and he do like motivational um, talks on there. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So like, when, Cause when, that's, it, cause that's where people go to find motivational. They want to pay for them when they can get them for free off of YouTube. Pretty much, but when they first announced it, I was like, "Wait, they're they're on OnlyFans." I mean, <laughs> he was like, "He was like, nah, fam." Like, I, I would never want to watch that, but they do motivational videos. <laughs> oh, so, um, mine. Uh, wait, wait, though. That would be some funny videos, though. You see the girl chilling on the couch and say, "I'm, <laughs> what I'm gonna do it myself tonight. It's Friday, and I ain't got nobody to chill with." And then all of a sudden, you hear, all, all of a sudden, out of out of nowhere, you hear. DJ Khaled, he come crashing through the door. The Kool Aid man, oh yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna say this. I'm, I'm gonna save this, and I'm, I'm gonna leave the OnlyFans alone. Look, you gotta make your money somehow. If all the girls are out here doing it during this pandemic, I'm pretty sure I can make a few dollars off of OnlyFans. So. C H A C H I Mandingo, ten dollars a month. I'm trying to get a PS5, so <laughs> I need I need either a PS5 or a Sugar Mama. I'll take both. I'm you tired still of- get a sugar- you've been trying to get a Sugar Mama for ten years. You ain't got one yet. I mean, you, you, and I, you in the DMV, bro? They everywhere. I like I'll, I'll get one for like a little bit, but then like things like like they try, they want more sugar. I'm like I'm not trying to give you that much sugar, so. You know, they got upset and then, you know, whatever. But, you know, you find <laughs> some. Like, I usually get hit up on Instagram all the time, like, with Sugar Mama bots. Like, they're like, I want to, you know, take care of you, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's something else somebody, you should do that, you know. Somebody with a name like that. So, I, I kind of gave up on, you know, meeting them on social media. But if they follow my OnlyFans, then I know it's real because they pay money to see me. And they want me, so I know it's real. You gotta be smart. Twenty twenty one. I tell you what, <laughs> I am so glad. Listen, I it is twenty twenty one, and the things that I have seen make me very glad that I met my wife before all this craziness got started. <laughs> because I do not think that I would be able to navigate. I do not think that in twenty twenty one, and we talk about me. That we talk about me, the me that I was when me and you met. Yeah, I could not navigate. The scene right now, it is just, it is unreal. Hard enough as it is for me, shoot. It, it's like tender. Person, right? Listen, I guarantee you, right now, if I was, if 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 I had not met my wife and I was still single right now, and I was maybe hoping to get a date or whatever, and some young lady expressed the interest in going out, my first question would be, "Do you have any type of social media whatsoever?" And if she said no, that's definitely a. Hey, all right, what time you want me to pick you up? Let me get your number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, nowadays. How many? Wait a minute. How many? Wait a minute. Question number two: How many female friends do you have, and how many of them are single? Because you, because you know, the, you know, the one girl that wants love, you got that that whole crew of single girlfriends, and they are <laughs> girl. You don't even want to mess with him. He don't, he don't weigh but two fifteen. You said you want a man that's two sixteen. How you know he only weighs two fifteen, girl? I know what a man look like in clothes. I know how much he weigh. <laughs> <laughs> like a whole like a whole bunch of girls trip like a whole yeah, crew <laughs> um, no offense intended, no offense intended though girls trip was hilarious it is i'm trying to think i mean um i mean i have a lot of single female friends um i don't know i mean it, that's kind of like too broad i got a lot of friends and associates um well that's well see that that's that's also part of that, that that's part of what i call Living in Northern Virginia, living in the DMV, yeah. man. So, it, there, there's <laughs> you. You could throw a rock and hit a single woman in the DMV. Yeah, pretty, I, pretty not to say that there's anything wrong with the woman. That there's anything wrong with her that she had to be single. It just it's so many people in that area. Yeah, so it's kind of hard for me to answer, but I, I would say um, a, a, a pond. I thought would a pond work? Lake. Lake, a lake what? full of. No, I'm trying to like I'm trying to oh, equate how many single friends I have, or single, single female friends I have. Um, well, you said you got a pond full or a lake full. A lake's bigger than a pond, right? Yeah, lake. Let's go with lake. Yeah. You got a lake full. Okay. Hmm. Well, I listen. I had a couple more questions I haven't even got to. I want to ask. I wanted to ask you. I, oh, well, let's, one, let's do it. Rapid fire. Let's do this. Pop, 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 number pop. one. 
what is what is the craziest set that you've ever done? Like, uh, like, like, yeah. What's the craziest set you've ever done? Like, craziest stuff you've seen at a set that I've done or someone else has done that you that you've been a participant in. Um, I remember I did a open mic at Britney's years ago, and um, the dude that was on the stage pretty much stripped down to his boxers. Um, yeah, like he stripped down during the set to his boxers and was like telling jokes. Um, it was very awkward and weird. Um, let's but he see. was ahead of his time. Look at uh, look at Bert Kaiser, quite yeah. Sure. It, it, exactly, but this this guy was weird with it. Um, I'm trying to like it depends on like, your definition of weird because I've seen like a, a lot of crazy shit. Like no, no like, I didn't say weird. I just say crazy. Like, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen at a set? Like maybe somebody from the audience pick a fight with the with the talent or oh, I mean that's normal. That's a, that's a normal day. To, that's a normal day for a comedian. Um, I have seen post show. Um, post shows are usually the best. I've seen post show. Um, I was hosting at the DC Draft Theater um, one night, and there was this girl that was in the back of the room. She had laughed so hard, uh, she ended up peeing her pants. Mm. But she was also drunk too, so I mm. thought she might just pee because she was drunk. But she she was having fun, um, but ended up like just passing out. But she peed her pants, and her boyfriend had to like carry her. Over his shoulder, like a, a like a caveman, you know. Type. <laughs> um, that was fun. Um, These are their stories. I, I've, seen, <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen people try to fight other, you know, comedians and try to rush the stage. Um, you know, the for multiple different reasons. Um, I've pretty much seen it all, but I, I think those two stick out to me the most right now. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I've been fortunate. I've never been to a show where I seen. I mean, probably the craziest thing I ever saw at a set was um, Drew Lynch. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's become his stick now. Like yeah. people, and I don't know how the whole thing started. Somebody heckled him. I, I would imagine the whole thing started with somebody heckled him. And I, I have to be completely honest with you. Um, the two people that I have seen best. And uh, with comebacks, with clapbacks, uh, and, and keeping the show moving, uh, are um, one is Andrew Schultz, and yep. the other one is, like Andrew Schultz will come out and just do a whole show, roast to do like a whole thirty minutes right. roasting somebody before he, he even gets into his routine, um, exactly. it, it just, and just pick somebody from the crowd at random and just go. Uh, but the other one is Drew Lynch, and apparently the video went viral, so that became a thing where people now go to his show. Specifically, the first time I'd ever seen it. People now go to this kid's show and just shout stuff out in the audience. And he just, I thought it was, a, I thought it was, a, you know, a, I didn't, I thought it was a bit, you know what I mean? But it is a real yeah. thing. People just go yeah. and they shout out stuff and he'll do 10 minutes on whatever it is that they shouted out, go back into his routine, do a callback on it right before he closes the show out. Yep. He is probably the, hey, yeah, I, the I've been I've been watching comedians for as long as I can remember. That in, in half a century, he is probably the best that I have seen at 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 oh oh the, oh this this is what we're eating now. Okay, power up, level up. I'm gonna joke on you for a minute, then I'm gonna come yep. back. Oh, that guy's laughing. You're part of it now too. Then back to the routine. Blah blah blah. Blue blah blah. Hate my wife. Hate my dog. Hey guys, before I get out of here, such and such and such, and you two guys can go screw yourselves. Good night. Bye bye. You know, like he, he's yeah. the best. <laughs> absolute best. Um. And then I wanted to circle back around to um, to Dion and to Romeo oh, yeah. uh, because uh, Dion, I know, I know you guys are you guys are still pretty close, and uh, at least to the best of my knowledge. Um, yeah, I called him and, yesterday for his birthday. His birthday was yesterday. Oh, uh, dang! I need to call him too. See, you, <laughs> you better than you better than me. He's not on uh, Facebook anymore, so but but yeah, he's um, on. Yeah, he is. No, his Facebook got taken from him. Must have been real. About like, about, yeah. <laughs> he lost his Facebook during during um during all the craziness of the election and oh stuff. well he's back. Oh I knew I knew about that. He's back because he made a key oh. comment on something I posted the other day. Oh yeah, um, okay. Yeah, but anyway, uh I, I he kind of he 
kind of took you under his wing as like a mentor. Uh, like in in Romeo having the access um, and resources available to provide a venue like the Romeo Divine Show, both the TV and the radio mm-hmm. uh, by, by Fairfax Public Access. Like, what was some of the advice? that what is some of the advice that they have given you over the years more so you know i know of course more so dion than romeo because romeo's not the area anymore but what's some of the advice that they gave you as a young comic trying to get in a game like and 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 how has that helped you um well obviously it helped because you know 10 years i know most folks do two open mics and bomb and then they're like nah i don't want to do that i'm just gonna go back to my job at uh kinko's <laughs> you know um so I mean, with with Dion, um, I, I feel like if I tell like the backstory how I met him, it helps out a little bit more. Um, so when I first met Dion, I was probably about six months in into comedy, um, and the way that we met was he started doing a show in Woodbridge, um, and I went out to it after being told don't go because the person who was running Britney's at the time. Um, and Dion had a prior B from, you know, way before. Um, so I was kind of, I was always told Dion was a bad person. Don't ever meet him, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I ended up, you know, I was like, you know what? Something's telling me to go. I'm going to go. Everybody keeps saying, you know, as a new comic, you should try to, you know, perform wherever you can. And like I said, I was 20 back then. So there was only a few places I could go to perform at because everywhere you had to be 21 and up. So with Dion's venue, I was able to go on being 20. So I went, met Dion, um, and me and him just kind of, we, we just, we hit it off right from then because he reminded me of himself so much. And a lot of people looking at us will think that we're father's son. And we, we, we play off of it all the time. You know, I, I consider Dion my father, you know, I you know, call him pops all the time and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but for comedy, you know, um, you know, he did take me under his wing and he just, he always told me advice that this, that was soundproof or sound to what I needed to hear at the moment. Um, a lot of times back then I would get frustrated um, just thinking that, you know, I wasn't good or, you know, I would get frustrated because I would see someone else get a little bit further than me. Uh, but he always kept reminding me, be yourself, no matter what, be yourself because that's what you're good at. You're good at being you. If you want to be, you know, if you're bringing your nerdy side, be your nerdy side, but no matter what, be yourself. Don't try to be someone else because a lot of people when I first started would tell me you should have an on stage persona and just make up some, you know, just make up this alter ego, which is great for some people. Don't get me wrong. It's great for some people, but I'm one of those people that I like to be real with things. Like I'm, I'm real with everything. Like I'm like, I, I will half my stuff. Now that I talk about stuff that's happened to me, I don't, you know, I don't like, yeah, I, I might twist some things there, but I can't do the whole fake alter ego, you know, fake persona. I can't do that. It's just so you, so you, you can't you can't do the the K, what's it called? K K Fabi? K K Fab? Yeah, it can't be I like to be real. K-fabe. Like there's, there's sometimes like if I'm at an open mic, I'll just shoot and just, you know, say whatever's on my mind and just like talk about how I really feel. But it ends up being funny because there's relatable stuff in it. Um right. but you know, some people, you know, they gotta they have this alter ego that they got to uphold. I'm like, no, like I went the person who's on stage to be the same person who you're talking to after the show, right. be the same person you catch at Walmart two days from right. now that you catch, you know, at IHOP, you know, a week later. Like I want you to know that you, you know, I'm, I'm legit. So that's one of the things that Dion taught me was to be myself. Yeah. Um, he definitely taught me a lot about stage presence. Um, and you know, just the, the, philosophy of comedy you know um what you know reading the crowd make sure you always read the crowd um you know especially when the host is up you want to survey and see what kind of crowd you're dealing with because you you know every show is different um some shows you're gonna have some people that you know that are gonna laugh at everything that's said um some shows you know you're gonna have people that laugh at certain things and that's the biggest thing is to figure out what is making them tick and, you know, pinpoint it and then cater to it. Because if you can win a, you know, a crowd over, then they'll follow you throughout the whole show. Yep. So it's very important at the beginning of the show. And that's why I tell a lot of, you know, comments now, 
when you first got on the stage, you need to, you know, you need to, you know, pretty much show your dominance that, hey, I'm on the mic right now. This is my time. You got to hear to listen, but you need to make them laugh at the same time also to keep their attention. So you need, you know, I, I call it an icebreaker. I know a lot of people, you know, use icebreakers for, you know, presentations and stuff like that, but you need a good icebreaker that's going to make the crowd laugh, get the crowd on your side, and then they'll follow you no matter which way you go. In your boy. Show. I'm sorry, your boy at the at the Fairfax Access Show, Tim, uh, True Tim Love. Miller. True Love, whatever, the dude with the afro. Uh, the, 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 yeah, true yeah. The bit with the notes. Yeah. Bruh, I didn't even know that was a bit. I thought that was real. <laughs> I did not know that was a bit. And I'm telling him after the show, like, bruh, like, how you forgot? And then you pulled the thing out and you turned the whole thing around and he's just looking at me like, is it? He's looking at y'all, like, in retrospect, he's looking at me like, yeah, and he's looking at y'all like, is this dude really that dumb? Like, I was, <laughs> I, was I was new to the game. I did not realize that was a bit. Like, Romeo had to tell me, like, yeah, that's a bit, bro. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but I've seen, I've seen cases where you get a comic on, and to me, they're funny. You know what I mean? But they have to, they have to hit that. It, it generally happens with an opener or a feature. Um, they have to hit that one joke that gets everybody in the room. And then from there, you can see they go from, oh, man, I'm about to bomb. You just see, you see, like, the, the light bulb goes on. And then they turn they turn on the juice. And then, who knows, for some people, that might be that might be their stick. Yeah, some people are like that. I think nowadays there's a lot more comics that will, they, they feed off of that awkwardness and mm-hmm. not doing well. Like, that's, that's their stick. Emo Which, if that's your stick, then hey, you know, that's great. Uh, more power to you, but you can't have everyone like that. Yeah, and then you would think with the with the whole alter ego thing that there there's some folks that actually start believing that after a while. You know exactly. what I mean? Like that, that, like that's who they are. Like they get on stage and they play an absolute jerk, but they're one of the coolest people in the world on stage. Or, or vice versa. They play like the nice yeah. guy on stage. They play this sweet and innocent. Oh my God, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they're actually a douche canoe in real mm-hmm. life. And then, uh, uh, nope, let me flip it back to where I was. Where they, they, they're they like, I'm just, uh, I'm that guy. And then they start believing it. And then after a while, they come, become consumed with it. Exactly. Because now you spent so much time building this image that you have to maintain this image. And now you can't shut it off ever. You can't ever just relax. And then it permeates into your personal life and yep. business affairs. And, you know, and, and then that's when you, you know, you hear the unfortunate stories about folks. So exactly. Yeah, definitely. And Dion, I will say this again. Dion is the guy to me. Dion is like that guy. That's that crazy uncle, but like the fun, crazy, the one that, yeah, <laughs> you could be in the back of the house at Thanksgiving at Big Mama's house, and you know when Uncle Dion showed up because he he does not come in the door quietly and sneak up on you. You hear mm-hmm. him coming, making his way across the room. Exactly, he, wherever he is, everybody's cracking up. Wherever he is, that's the one. The Big Mama talking about Dion. Stop telling them babies that you're so crazy. Yep, you yep. Know? I I love the man to death. I love him to death. Uh, and I I. I, I, maybe he, maybe this is where he wanted to be. Maybe he wanted to be bigger. I'm not, I'm not dogging him at all. Yeah. I, but honestly, I thought you couldn't tell me when I met Dion that he wasn't going to at this point be as big or bigger than like Cat and Kevin and be like, be, or, or at least be right on par with like Cat and Kevin and Dave. Cause I'm like, somebody's going to get that guy on TV. As soon as he gets on TV, he's going to blow up. Yeah. I mean, I, I know. Knowing him as well as I know him, you know that's not what he wanted because he he had the contract with, um, with Sony and all that back in the day, and it, it just wasn't, you know, it just wasn't what he wanted. Um, so you know he he he's happy, you know, with everything that he's done. I mean, I know um, he tells me he has no regrets, um, which, which is one of the things I always wanted to make sure that I I had with comedy was like I didn't have any regrets. Um, you know, everything that I've done, I've you know, did to the fullest and have fun. 
Uh, a lot of things I've done, I didn't think I would you know, actually end up doing, but I did it anyway. And it's like, you know, it's, it's just humbling. But yeah, Dion, Dion's, you know, he, he's one of my mentors in life and, and, and in comedy. Um, you know, and I, I'm just, if I would have done it, I would have never met him. And it, it, it's crazy, you know, that, you know, you, you meet all these different people through comedy and, you know, a lot of people I'm, I'm still friends with that started off with, like Dion, for example, met him when I first did it. Um, Brian Siegel, you know, I met him and Dion at the same time. Me and Brian, Brian still do comedy in Fredericksburg, you know, each week we do an improv group um, and we put on shows on Facebook Live every other Friday. Uh, is, that, is that the guy that I see the where they did the uh, illustrations of the two of y'all? No, I'm sorry. That's that's another one. I'm sorry. That's somebody else okay. I'm thinking about. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, we still, you know, we still perform, you know, to this day. We got, uh, like I said, our improv troupe, uh, Born in Quarantine. You know, we still, you know, do stuff together. And it, it's pretty much been 10 years. Um, you know, Romeo, you know, Romeo's helped me out a lot, you know, with, with getting on, you know, different venues and, and just getting my face out there and, and you know, with video and, and stuff like that. And just, you know, just get my voice out there. I, I owe him a lot for that. Um, you know, there's a lot of other, you know, comics who aren't mainstream yet that, you know, that, you know, that local, um, that is, is very rare nowadays for me to go to a show and see someone that was around 10 years ago. It's, it's a, I could probably count on like two hands, uh, but there's still a few guys you know, that are still here and it's, it's crazy because we always joke about it. Like, hey, remember, you know, 10 years ago when we were still in this room and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, I remember that. It's like, look at us now. Still still not still not famous, but we're still, you know, we're still loving what we're doing. We're still having having fun and still doing this with a smile on our face. So yeah, it, it, it's crazy. That's what it boils down to at the end of the day. Um, if, if if you, are you happy with your, if you, are you happy with what you do and are you happy with your body of work? Because everything else, there's been plenty of people that made it to the big time and they go back and they go, man, I wish that X, I hadn't done X, Y, Z at this point, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I had to be honest with you, man, I'm, I'm proud of you, bro. Cause I, 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 I can honestly say I knew you, <laughs> I, I saw like you, you, you are the, you, you, the first comic that I have, have knowledge of that I have witnessed on a personal level when I was there from damn near the time when you were getting started you know, up to now. So something pop off, something pop off, you, something, something pop off, you'd be a name drop, you know? I'd be like, hey, yeah. oh, hey, be like, oh, 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 B, oh B. I remember, I remember B, I remember B when B was like a buck 10 soaking wet. We used to tease that boy about you, you know? Cause I, it, I, I will name, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll name drop in a minute. Cause I, oh, I do too. I do. Watch well, this, watch this. Cause watch this. I'm gonna tell you who I'm in school with. Red Grant. I was pledging. The, I, was pledging my, I was pledging my fraternity the same time he was pledging his on the campus wow. of Savannah State University. I tell you who else I went to school with, who was in school at the same time. You Ooh. might see him on Fox News or uh, Fox Sports Undisputed, sitting across the table from Skip Bayless. Don't say oh, shit. Stop it, Skip. Stop it, Skip. Skip Bayless. Skip, Got Bayless. It. Skip. Let me tell you. Skip. Let me tell you something. I played ball a long time with school Savannah State University. And and you know uh, a lot of people graduated uh, 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 cum laude, magna cum laude. I graduated, thank you, laude. That's how it went. But that's okay. I did. I wound up not getting no L's on my plate. That's right. The poor boy from Heightsville, Georgia, that done good. Skip, man, Shannon, yes, Shannon, the, that all of that that y'all see on TV, that is nothing new. He taught all that trash in the student union when he was whooping everybody on the pool table. He would be Yo. on the sideline talking trash. On the sideline, talking trash to the other players from his sideline. Shannon would get a pass and catch somebody and put a shoulder on them and knock them down and stand and look up, the, you know, before they started flagging people. Boy, stand yeah. over and look at them and walk back off. And damn, let's say, and damn, damn let's say something, Skip. I put these bowls <laughs> on you, boy. This thing on you know, afterwards, you know, me and the boys go to the club, get some black and miles and some hen dog. <laughs> Yo, that's wild. Yeah, man, yeah. I, and I'm like, you know, we knew he was going to be in the league. We knew he was going to be something special. We did, you, but you never know how. You know, I didn't know it was going to be this deep. Like that's something. Yeah. That's bro. That's thirty some odd years ago. 
You think about yeah. it. I was in school. That was like 91, 90, 91, 92. Shit, I was just born. <laughs> 91. Right, you know? I name, but I will. I name drop on you in a minute. So blow it up. So go ahead. Come on. Come on. Come on here. Get big. So I can drop. Hey, that Brian, look, as soon as the pandemic ends, that, that's that's the that's the plan. Look, the minute. Look, I'm gonna need to get a disclaimer from you, with your permission. To, I don't care who your management company is at that point <laughs> to drop this interview. To, to to just casually, I'm just gonna drop this right here on Facebook <laughs> social media. After you after you have your HBO special and you start touring, and be like, ah, pff, I interviewed you first. Beat this. Got him. Gotcha. Got this. Got right. him. 2021. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know I got you. Yeah, you know I'm gonna hit you, like, bro. These tickets come to Oklahoma City. Come to Oklahoma City. You got well, right. yeah, honestly, I mean, you would you would be the first person I would hit up. Like, hey, I'm going to Oklahoma City. Let me crash at your house. <laughs> right, if you big time, if you big time, and you be like, hey, why don't y'all come crash at the suite where I'm staying at the Ritz at the at the what is it? What is it, King Joffrey Jefferson? Said? Uh, you will confine yourself to a royal suite at the Waldorf Victoria Hotel. Shoot, that's money. I'm trying to save my money. I'm saying, oh, stay at your place. <laughs> in your guest room. I'm trying to look, save that you, money. You, 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 look, you can't stay at my house. You might not be able to do a show because you know I'm going to throw something on the smoker. Shoot. Throw uh, something fine. on the smoker, me, and you make a run down to the little, to, to the licky store. I don't drink no more, but, you know, you have your little something, something. Oh, have, have, a, have a, look, I ain't going to tell nobody because I'll be like, I mess around and tell one person, you know, Brandon Morris at the at the, crib. the whole the whole town be out there. Oh, whole, <laughs> look, I look outside, and be like, you hear helicopters, right? <laughs> we just want to get a picture. Can we get an interview? <laughs> What's going on with you and Kim Kardashian? <laughs> right, <laughs> brother. If you get famous, please do not get with Kim Kardashian. She's a career killer. No, no, the whole that whole family is. So let's be honest. No, I'm just saying. All, all like, those- look. look Everybody thought Kanye was crazy, but Kanye but held on all, all this all this time. Well, he is, but we prayed. We started praying. I started praying for Kanye then, because everybody that got with the Kardashians that either fell off or lost their mind or made some major lifestyle change in yeah. their life. And now I'm not. I'm not dogging. Excuse me. I'm not dogging Caitlyn or whatever. But everybody that has got with the Kardashians, Lamar Odom. They, 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 they messed around and damn near coked himself to death. Yeah. You don't house. walk out the same. Ray, Bush, the same. Ray, Ray J was on his way to fame and fortune. He was just starting to take off. He got with Kim Kardashian. He had never had another hit. He, the matter of fact, the last time, the next time he was relevant after Sexy Can I, after messing, he had Sexy Can I. Then he yep. got with Kim. The next time he was relevant after that was he had to write a song called I Hit It First. Yeah, I Ooh. Hit It First. Yep. Yep. Then Reggie Bush signed that multi-million dollar first round oh, draft pick money and played the Eagles and got knocked the hell out and ain't been right since then. Yeah, he hasn't been oh, right Reggie, since. You know Reggie Bush married a woman that looked just like Kim Kardashian? Look it up. I, I'm not making it up. I believe it. I believe it. Because some people you know, like she doesn't, look, she doesn't look, he does she doesn't look just like her, but she very strongly resembles. I mean some people like that though. That that break was so and find yeah. someone that looks exactly like their ex and be with them. But Kanye was holding on. Kanye went all the way and got married, had kids, it's... the whole time. And then and, and slowly his mind started to unravel. And now Kanye is going to unfortunately wind up on the same heap with everybody else. See, Chris Humphreys had a, what well, Chris Humphreys had, Chris Humphreys signed a multi million dollar deal, messed around and hooked up with, which one was it he got with? Um, shoot, um, I forget. He he got the he signed a multi million dollar deal, got married, stayed married for three days, never was the same again. Yeah, that was it. Don't so don't please do your boy a favor. Nah, stay away avoid, from avoid the avoid the Kardashians. Nice to look at, dangerous to touch. It's like it's like a flower with poison thorns. You can take pictures all day, just don't touch it. Just don't touch it. No, don't okay. touch. Good yeah, buddy. Mm-mm. No, I would definitely stay away from them. Um, not not enough money in the world. I mean, I know some of them got a little bit, you know, like Kylie, but I I, I can't. I'm good. I'm, I I will stay away from them. Mm-mm. Well, look here, my friend. We have gone almost an hour and a half. Okay, let's go. Marathon, I, man. Hey, we got and look like not like it was nothing, like butter. But uh, <laughs> listen, you got any projects in the? I mean, I know Corona kind of has a. I gotta play it one more time. I'm sorry. La, la, la. Guess what, bitch? La, la, la. Barry. 
That's the short version. Um, coronavirus <laughs> has kind of um, uh, put the kibosh on a lot of stuff. But you got any projects in the pipeline that, that'll be popping uh, up after everything's all said and done? So I'm still out here in these streets because um, the grind doesn't stop. Um, you catch me every hey, Wednesday. Come on, look, you are not hanging out with Ti expeditiously. Don't don't come at me. Whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa! Nah, man, you talk about I'm still out here on these in these streets like you gag, like you gag bag, like you. That's what I say. You, you, we are not. You not running with Ti expeditiously. Just, just tell the people what you're doing, man. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm giving I'm, you a hard time, man. Go ahead. Breakdown. Um, I got to put chops at least once. <laughs> So every Wednesday, um, I do a podcast also. Um, the spinoff is produced by Broken My Comedy. So if you uh, type in Broken My Comedy, you'll, you'll see the logo. Follow the page. Um, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's also on um, Apple Music. Uh, pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast that uh, listen to podcasts is on there. Um, Thursday nights, I run a uh, open mic. So I still do open mics. Weekly open mic comedy night at Casey's Music Alley in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, if you're in the VA area or uh, have ever been to Fredericksburg, you know of Carl's Ice Cream. It's like 30 seconds away from there. Uh, we start off at 8 o'clock there and pretty much rock out there. Also, last, um, you can catch me every other Friday um, on Born in Quarantine Improv. Um, we have a page, Facebook page. We do live shows on there. Uh, we also do shows, you know, actually in a live location where people could come and watch. Uh, it's pretty much like whose line is it anyway? We do um, improv shows, mix it with stand up sometimes. It's a lot of fun. You can, you know, come and watch it yourself. You can, you know, give us suggestions, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, that's usually eight o'clock, um, either eight or nine, depending on if we're live at an actual location or if we're in the studio. Uh, but follow Born Quarantine on, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And then same with Broken My Comedy, Broken My Comedy, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and then, or if you just follow me, you can find everything that way. And that's it for okay. me. And you still on that hustle. I don't know that a lot of people in the entertainment business putting in that much work except for musicians in the studio. Uh, that's my it. man, my man, I appreciate you, bro. I do. I really appreciate you coming on the show and hanging with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know him, you love him, you heard what he said. Broken Mike Comedy, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find it on Facebook and iTunes. Casey's Music Alley Open Mic Comedy from on Thursdays at 8 in Fredericksburg. And the Born in Quarantine Improv on Facebook Live every other Friday at 8 p.m. You can also find them at Twitter and IG at We Want More Now and Facebook. We Want More Now. Um, I'm telling you, uh, if there's anybody that's going to break into business from that area, uh, and the last person I think to do it was is is Young Fly from DC. He is DC Young Fly and DC Young Fly and Wanda Sykes. So yeah, Wanda, definitely that's good. That's good company to be in in terms of big names. We've dropped some names, but I got to play this before we get out of here. So uh, let me let me drop this clip on them real quick. This is from the Karaoke Comedy Posse. Oh, this gosh. thing is four thousand karaoke celebration and birthday bash because it was around right around the same time as my birthday uh this was 2012 so this is from nine years ago Ooh. and this uh this was a bit you had about Krispy Kreme donuts it was funny given the fact that we were talking about the fact <laughs> that you needed to eat at that point um so here's that right here ladies and gentlemen take a listen Stuff like that should not happen. Hey, I 
I'm going, I'm going crazy at this point because I need to eat right now. If I miss another meal, I might disappear, okay? I might turn out the rest. I might turn out the rest. Brandon Moore again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> Nephew, I appreciate you, man. You've come a long way in the last decade. Uh, I, I mean, then, then again, so have we all. So we're going we gonna to get out of here. B, I need you to hang tight after we sign off. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. we appreciate you for catching this week's episode of Indian Unsigned. Make sure to catch us next week when our guest will be also out of Northern Virginia. An up-and-coming singer from, uh, I forget where she's from. We'll find that out before we go on next week because that's the information I need to know. But her name is Samantha Haas. I call her Polly Pockets. We'll get into that whole story when we see her next week. We appreciate you. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Be safe. I'm Mr. Figures, the Mad Karaoke DJ. And uh, me and B, uh, O-U-T out. Take care.